Hello, this is the Aftermarket Report, which is on Sunday, our, our extended edition. Today's date is January the 27th, 2019. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that, uh, ring that bell so you can get our future updates. And I'm going to hand this right over to Miss Vegas, and she's going to give you the uh, watch list for today. Okay, well, good afternoon, everybody. Hope you're enjoying your Sunday. And uh, always trying to help you guys get ready for the week. So uh, today's list, we're going to talk about Quran, C-R-O-N, and we're also going to comment on BCCI, which is an OTC stock. We're going to talk about Rewalk, R-W-L-K, C-I-G, M-C-H-X, S-I-L-V. I'm going to give an update in another OTC. I, think I might even throw in a bonus today. It's been a little while. So... Uh, I'm just going to talk first about Quran. So you got company and you guys also know that they're going to be having a special meeting on February 21st, which is really to talk about the uh, equity investment that was given the $2.4 billion. And they also have their earnings uh, coming up in February as well. So I think February is going to be like really exciting times for Quran. Um, so I'm just going to turn it right over to Jim because it's been super bullish on Cron and he's going to talk all about Cron and I'd love to hear what he has to say. So Jim, over to you. All right. Well, you, I, I can't repeat how many times I've mentioned Cron in our videos. It just seems like a super play for everybody to get in it. I like playing the pullbacks on it. Usually it, I have a price target on this thing at $20. Uh, other analysts have his, a price target at around 22, so I'm I'm a little bit under them, which is okay with me. And we've called this out when it was down here at 10:15 on a 20-day chart, and we're still looking at that 20-day chart. And ever since then, it's just been on a bullish up trend uh, pattern. And we had another breakout uh, Friday morning, and it ran all the way to 16.74, and then it pulled back pretty good little step. So I'm going to pull up the five-day chart on this baby. We're going to look at that little breakout it had. And I always say, don't chase this stock because you'll get a chance to get in it and and play the uh, pullback. And this thing pulled back to a real under, I mean, it went under my support level, which I had here at 1583. And it pulled all the way back down to this bottom trend line at 1547. And I was calling this out in the room right around 1555. And I said, get in this thing. It's going to run back up to resistance level again. And we have an ascending triangle on that day where it just followed the 200 SMA. You had a couple times get in and out of this and pull back that 200 SMA on a five-day, uh, five-minute chart. So I'm going to pull this up one more little one-minute daily. We had that big breakout. It pulled back to 1547. This is a great options play if you're playing options and you want to scalp the options. And it ran all the way up and it hit that 200. I had a golden cross, and then they met, and then we had another pullback. Had a little squeeze right there when the the 100, the 50, the 100, and the 200 met, but it didn't break out of that 200. That 50 pulled on back. So there was a good time to get in there and take that bounce again and pull it back, and it hit that support level again at 1585. So this is one that I recommend to play the pullback and not chase it. It's very I'm very bullish on this trade. And we closed Friday at 16.02, and it bounced up to 16.09. So I'm waiting, excited to see how it's going to act Monday. And if it pulls back, I'm back in it for a scalp play. And I'm scalping this. And when I say I'm long in a stock, a lot of times I'll take the profit at resistance. 
and I'll play the pullback, but I'm still very bullish on. So I'm not going to, you know, tell you any different. I'd, I'd like to play the pullbacks, and I take in more profit when I do that because I know it's going to bounce right back up to resistance. And this is Cron, and then I'm going to also bring up the stock that we were alerted in our room about by one of our local traders, Patrick, which teaches night classes. And this one's C B, I mean B C C I. This is a Super Bowl play, Super Bowl ad play, and I've been doing a lot of research, a little bit of research on this coffee, and they have what you call white bean coffee, which um, has double the caffeine intake, and so they got this new product out right now, and they're based in Seattle, and they've got a new coffee out now that I just ordered Friday. I had a little contest in the room, and our lucky contestant won him a free bag of two ounce coffee. And this is CBD coffee, enriched roast, and I can't wait to receive it and try it out. But I did want to bring it up, and I will show you the chart real fast on this stock. Just I'm still bullish on it. I'm bullish long, but I'm playing, like I said, I play the resistance, and I play the pullbacks on this, on this stock, or on any stock I'm long in. And let me pull up the five-day here. That probably tells us the best story. This was down here at a penny. It was alerted to the room from Patrick, and it ran all the way up to the four cents in a couple of days, which is about a 300% increase. And it pulled back to that support level, which I have here on the blue line at 237. So it ran up again, and it broke out again last Friday to 4.3. Then it pulled back, and it hit my little 200 SMA on a five-day, five-minute chart, which was another strong buy. I alerted it in the room at the time. And that was right around here, around 3.2. But you topped, you kept hitting this 3.4 level. So we closed at after hours at 3.8. And let me just pull up the daily one minute. I'm still very bullish on this. And I'm going to play this for, I think, a long time until, until it weathers out. But it just, I just like this company, and I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a fan of coffee. You know, coffee, good pair of shoes, and a good bed. I've mentioned this in our last video. So... Right now, I'm in it down here right around 3-4. I held it over the weekend, and we're going to see what happens. If it pulls back, I'll probably get back out of it and scalp it again. But I'm still bullish on this stock for a long period of time. I think this can go a long ways. And this had a lot to do with the farm bill that was passed. Now they're going to start growing, you know, growing their, getting better CBD oil to add to their coffee. I just can't wait to taste it. So the next one... Vegas wants to talk about is going to be RWLK. R W L K. Okay, so rewalk. Um, so, as you guys know, I love. I just love the technology that goes on with these stocks, and uh, sometimes they're disappointing. But I still believe that it's one of the strongest countries out there that's so advanced with um, technology and pharmaceuticals. And Rewalk is one of them. You know, they actually manufacture and market the wearable robotic. They call it the exoskeletons for people that have, you know, disabilities in their lower limb area usually as a result of people from a spinal cord injury or stroke. I have been blessed to meet the actual founder and inventor of Rewalk um, almost two years ago this year. Met him in Israel at a Technion Institute uh, event and had a fabulous conversation with him about his product. And, you know, I, you know, from then to now, I was just, you know, surprised that the stock just hasn't taken off. But I do want to say one thing, um, you know, Rewalk um, has seen progress with the product in Germany. They just didn't see the results uh, as much in the U.S. in the fourth quarter of 2018. But they do believe there is a solid market for the product. And they look forward to advancing their restore system for stroke patients. And also, they are looking to finalize and complete their submission to the U.S. Food and Drug Administration very shortly. And uh, they remain extremely so uh, I think that's great. Uh, there was also an article too, as you guys know, that you know Rewalk uh, is working directly with the Wise Institute on creating a commercial exosuit for medical rehabilitation. 
And obviously, before becoming commercial, as you guys know, they have to get the CE certification and the FDA approval, which are obviously in the works. Um, and, uh, you know, there was some interest. I believe that Bill Gates was there not too long ago. Um, and he was personally demoed one of the exosuits, which is an inflatable soft robotic glove for grip strength augmentation. And uh, I think he was very impressed uh, from what I could see and from what I read. I will definitely include in our video information today the link of this article. And you can actually watch the video um, to see exactly how the product works. I think it's so, so cool. And I actually saw in the news yesterday, too, um, a sports celebrity who was injured. He was actually not sports, but a race car driver. Uh, I guess that's a sport. Uh, and he got a major injury to his spine and he is currently using this product as well for helping him walk again so that's why it's called rewalk uh so that actually tells you the story behind the name but what's interesting to me is actually the stock right so lately it's had a lot of action on the stock had a hard time breaking this 25 cents took so long but you know what finally did break and uh, I am very pleased with the volume on the stock. So I wouldn't be surprised to see this go into the mid 30s plus. But I'm going to turn that over to Jim to talk about that because um, he is our chart guy. And uh, he can see things a little different than many of us. So Jim, turn it over to you to talk about Rewalk Robotics chart. Yeah, I, I, I love this company. You know, the been watching it for a good year. And we were watching it when it was right around a buck. So it's really oversold right now. And we broke out from a bottom here around 1653 on a 20-day chart. And every day it's created a, uh, what I would call a, a, a higher low. About every day it consolidated here for uh, a good couple weeks at 21 cents. And then last week we had that big breakout that one day where it ran up here to right around 97 and then it pulled on back, and um, and and then the last three days, <clears throat> we had another breakout, and we had that um, real good breakout last Thursday, and it pulled back again to my other support level, which I had here at 26, and it bounced on up here and hit that resistance level, which to me is a pretty solid resistance right here, right around 29 cents. So I did scalp this play a few times, and I'm just going to probably go ahead and grab me some more on the next pullback and play the next scalp but we have a resistance level here at 29 that we really need to start building above for the for the next um for the next breakout and let me just pull up oh let me pull up uh one month yeah see on one month i have next resistance on this stock right around 40 cents so that's going to be my next target and we'll pull up the year just to look at the yearly moving averages. We broke past that 50. And you see where I got that 40 at right here on the bottom of that wick. And there's another little resistance level right here right around 44.3. Somewhere around that 44 cents. Then you got the 100 SMA at the 54.91 and the 200 up here at 77.91. And I can see a pretty good little yearly support level right around 70 cents. So I'm going to draw me a couple little trend lines in here that I can probably, if we can still build up the momentum. Uh, a lot of rooms are talking about this stock. They were calling it out a little under 20. I mean, and so that's basically what we're looking at. And it's going to be on high alert for next week. And I do like the volume that you see the last couple of months, how the volume's picked up. And then the last month, how it's really picked up. And then the last two days, we're at the highest level yet. So this is our walk. Keep a good eye on it. And the next one we're going to talk about is CIG. Okay. So this company is a Brazilian energy company. And uh, you know what? This one here I liked in particular specifically because of the fact that it was making, I believe here, a two-year high. Yep. And also I actually was intrigued. I have to say I was intrigued uh, by the volume that I've been watching this keep going. And this just keeps making higher and higher uh, closes and higher and higher 52-week highs. 
So I kind of like this one for a continuation and or what I would like to call a swing trade because, you know, it's going to take some time uh, for this to actually move. I mean, it may only move two, three cents. So it's not really something I see as a day trade stock unless there's some serious news that comes out. But I mean, in terms of a stress free trade, I mean, I really like the setup on this one. And um, I'm going to let Jim talk about where he can see this go because there's some really key numbers that him and I talked about this morning that if it breaks, this will be actually quite instrumental in uh, where this direction of the stock's going to go. It's in a, coming towards a new channel. So, Jim, over to you on this particular swing trade idea. Yeah. Um, like she mentioned, we had that two year high there, right here, right around 376, right around 382 is where that top of that wick is, just a little bit, 280. Uh, 383 and that was back on 31317 is when that happened and it pulled back and it's been consolidating ever since and in the last month or two it's just we had a big breakout right here and we had that and then we had Friday we had that two-year high breakout at 390 and I'm gonna pull up a smaller chart on this stock but that's your three-year chart right there and it looks you know that looks pretty impressive if you can know how to find supports and play off them support levels and I'm gonna pull up the one year just to show you where the moving averages are we busted past all the three of the moving averages we had that golden cross right in here you see where I'm talking about this little period right in here where it broke past the 100 and the 200 SMA and it just followed way above that trend line, which is very positive, very, very uh, bullish, very bullish. And that's been for the last four months. So now I'm going to pull it to the 20 day and show you the action on a 20 day chart. We had a little resistance level on the 20 day at 376, which I think was a consolidated resistance with that 20 day high being here a double top right around 380 right there. And then for the last, then we broke out past that. On Thursday and then we went ahead and rode up again above that to that 390 high so that's a 10 cent bounce right there and then after hours it closed at 384 and I think we're probably right around that 384 so let me see let me pull up the one day one minute we had that 390 high we pulled back so what we got to do here within next week is break past this 390 level right there for the resistance level and then I say the first resistance is going to be right around 387 then you got another one right here right around 386 so that's not big of a you know not too big of a bounce right there so let's keep this thing on walk on watch sig and like I said we're bust past it to three year highs on it which is a two year high so we got an elevator on up and that sig cig and the next one Vegas wants to talk about it's going to be MCHX. Yes, yeah, so this one here, the Marchex Inc. Now, Marchex Inc. I like it too. You know, I was really looking for stocks that have made some nice new moves, and you know what? Marchex is one of them. Um, this company here, um, you know, is what they do, first of all, is they provide call analytics that drive. And measure results so for example if you have a call center um and you want to find out you know what you know is the promotion you know people like for example when you watch the shopping channel and people are calling in to buy a certain product a company like marchex would be able to provide the shopping channel with data uh, specifically about what is driving the calls what is making the volume come in what's the volume you know if the volume was good if the did they convert those calls into a actual sale so they're able to provide um, good analytical data that can help determine companies how to you know design their marketing strategies so um, that's really interesting um, the company also is going to be presenting as well at the uh, conference uh, I think they just did actually, sorry, they prov they did present at a conference actually just a couple weeks ago in New York. And uh, I think we'll see more from this actual company. But I like it because of what I saw chart. I really like the 52-week closing high. 
Um, this one here, you know, in terms of the volume, um, it's not humongous. I mean, it's not in the millions. It's very uncrowded. But you know what? I'm happy with the way it's going and the direction of where it's moving. And again, uh, some three-year highs coming our way. So this will be also very key and instrumental on the direction of where this is going. But so far, extremely bullish. And to me, this is another stressful swing trade idea. And Jim, what would you have to say about this beautiful, beautiful chart? Yeah, the chart's beautiful. The volume bars is consistent, which I like seeing in a, in a, in a chart. The volume bars earnings are good earnings are are above normal and what i'm seeing on a three-year chart here we have that 418 resistance which my resistance is right at 406 and i think the uh and this is a three-year chart because we had this little bottom back there in 2016 at 196 and it ran up and it hit this little resistance level which is right around 3 315 to 320 and then the last three days we busted and we tried to bust that a few times during that period and then here in the last month we hit it pulled back to that 100 sma on a three year and bounced on up and now we're about ready to break out of that resistance level here at 406 which is mine and let's pull up the one year's chart i'm going to show you how pretty this chart is it i mean it's pretty for a scalper play if you're you know if you're like to scalp stocks take like five day run take the pull back and then bounce it get back in and out of it we had a year low back last year at 247 which support level on that year low was right around 257 and then you can see on the year chart where we had the golden cross and it pulled back right there but that cross kept on going up which indicated to me it was still very bullish and then look what happened we bounced from that 263 level up to almost a beautiful straight I mean look at that three weeks of solid gap up high after high after high after high almost up to that 406 resistance we hit four dollars Friday so you know that's just beautiful we only had one day where it could kind of well about three or four days here where it consolidated a little bit you know just gave enough time for that was back even during when we had that big crash last year look at how that thing ran in the month of December you just don't I mean you just don't see stuff like that you just don't see it and we did pull I mean but we did pull back on that December month but then it turned around and just and I think every stock in the market pulled back that that last two weeks of, of December but we've really regained <laughs> big bounce on and we like I said we closed at four bucks so I'm gonna look at the 20 day just to show you how pretty this can be it went from that 261 support level all the way up to about four bucks right here 398 is going to be my little resistance level so if we pull back any this will be a great pullback stock to about 386 and maybe it can if we can get in it at the 379 380 level that's going to be your low low support with maybe just a wick down here at 375 and take me to the bank on that if that wick goes no more than 375 we're going to get a nice little retracement bounce on this stock to break that three-year resistance at 406 and then i'm just going to pull up the daily to show you what last day looked like we called this out in the room oh no we did not call this out in the room i think we just i'm just now new to this stock myself you can see i've been drawing trend lines on it but we did bounce up from that 375 area 376 friday Ran all the way up to four, and we did pull back after hours to that 349 level, at 394, I mean. And I'm going to put that little trend line right there for another support level. And keep it on watch. And this is MCHX. Vegas, you know what you want to talk about next. Don't you mention it? Yeah, I do. I do. So I do want to talk about a Canadian company uh, called Silver Crest Metals. And, uh, you know, I'd never even heard of this company. But I really was appealed by this chart and I uh, really was impressed. I was reading, um, you know, the uh, CEO and director. I mean, he his name is Eric Fear, and he's got, you know, he's a geologist. He's an engineer. Um, he's got tons of experience. And even the uh, COO 
Pierre, he's also been with Bear Gold. He's worked in capital project groups. I mean, they have locations, uh, lots of experience all over the place. However, all their properties are in Mexico. So that is interesting too. And uh, I have to say, I'm quite impressed with the way that this is looking. I mean, this actual uh, chart as well uh, with silver crest metals uh, is very nice and uh, moving beautifully. I mean, again, another stressful pick. It's got a new 52 week closing high, new 52 week high, definitely overbought. Um, closed around, I guess, here at the 350 mark. Um, but there's still room for this to probably still go. And um, Jim's going to talk about that because, again, if you guys like swing trades, um, you know, this could actually move quite nicely. I mean, this had a low of day on uh, Friday at 329, went as high as 353. So, I mean, even for a day trade, this would have been phenomenal to make uh, that kind of money. So um, I think this should be on your radars and uh, very nice, I will say, very nice volume surge as well uh, on Friday. Last time it had volume like that was back on January 11. So wonder what's going on here. But I got to say, quite bullish. And Jim, what are your thoughts on Silvercrest Metals? Well, the first thing pops in my head is they, they promoted Stephanie, they call Rosie, to the vice president position of this company. So there's of my flags off to another another lady taking charge of stuff. She's vice president, so they're excited about that. And she's uh, expert. She's managed the company since what 2000. Oh wow, she's been in the company since 2015. And just got that big promotion. Mm -hmm. So kudos to her. Now, but she met the company also at the location in Mexico back from 2009. Oh, really? So, okay. Yeah, she was working at the at the location in Mexico, but um, she's definitely going to be a, a value-added addition to her new role. And I wonder why they call her Rosie. <laughs> Probably maybe she's, she's just, she's maybe just she's a, a rosy girl. Maybe she's got rosy cheeks. Yeah, or she's a very um, happy person, you know. Yeah, rosy, she is. She a rosy is. person so, can always yeah. uh, bring excitement in a company. Okay, so let's continue here. Okay, so... I'm going to pull up the year's chart on this. First, I'll pull up a three-year because I think we're, we're approaching those three-year levels on a lot of stocks. And, and you, as you've seen, I've pulled up about every stock we talked about today at the three-year level. And that first resistance we had to break, which was right around 277. Then that next resistance we had to break, which we did this uh, last year. Here, let me see. Yeah, we just 2018 was that 305 level, 307. And it pulled on back and almost touched that 50 SMA. And then we've had another breakout here Friday on this stock, which we had to break that resistance level at 336. And this is on a three-year chart. So we're, we're way past those two other levels. You can see there's a gradual new high, new high. And so I always tell anybody that follows me to not chase anything, to play a pullback on stocks that we like. And not a big pullback, but I mean, they always pull back a little. So we're going to pull up the one year. Look how impressive that chart is. We had a 146 low in a year period up to about 350 right now, which is a good, good 120 some percent uh, bounce on that stock. And we hit that resistance again. I'm going to repeat it 306. The next one was right at 336. And we hit a high Friday of 353. So let me pull up the daily or a five day. Now let's pull up the 20 day, one hour. Now I don't see too many trend lines I want to add. I might add this 345 right there and add this 340 for a support level, maybe a pullback. And that's just talking about Friday. And you see how we almost touched that previous high. So this is a pretty solid support right here at 340. You see where we had, and this is how I, how I judge pullbacks. I try to look for a previous high within a week's period or even the day before. And a lot of times I'll pull back to that area. So let's look at 340 maybe for an entry on the stock if it pulls back any. And then I'm going to pull up a daily one minute. And more or less it was a gradual, gradual climb. It wasn't really nothing real hot, nothing fired up with the volume. But it did gradually raise its resistance level. 
up to this 350 area. So I'm going to put a little trend line. That's just 349, 350 area. So what we got to break coming out is this 353 pullback support level. Like I said, was that previous high? And let me see if I can pull that. Look that. Look at that one more time. And that's right here at 340. And I'm going to change this so I can remember it to a color of solid support right there at 340. If we get a pullback, it could be either be 345, you might hesitate, 340 is going to be your low support. Anything below it is going to be a strong buy. And this is SILV. I like it. I love it. I want some more of it. And then Vegas has got one that she's been talking about for a little while. And that's going to be... Yeah, I just... <clears throat> Go ahead. Yeah, I just want to mention uh, this one here, you know, um, this S -I -L -V. is the OTC stock, S-O-A-N. Oh, S-O-A-N. And uh, that one there, you know, I've mentioned this one here. Uh, just keep, I mean, I'm in it from zero, uh, zero two three there. But um, what I want to mention is that it's had a nice move. And um, sorry, my 0 0.023. Uh, and it's had a beautiful move on Friday. No reason why I didn't see any news, but there is a reverse merger which should close off uh, this coming week. Uh, so we know the story behind this. Also, Brent Atwood, activist investor in the stock. I think he's got a little, a little over 5 million shares. Uh, so he's got some money invested here. And um, he'll be uh, very involved in this uh, particular company. So... Uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, for those of you that are not in this stock, that's fine. No one has to buy anything we talk about. We just like to share trading ideas. But, you know, we've been talking about this from the 023, and uh, it closed really nicely on Friday. Um, so I think that um, there's some good potential with the stock. Can this pull back? Absolutely. I mean, anything can pull back. But uh, do your own due diligence, and you might want to check this company out. And uh, it's definitely on my, you know, for 2019 at this point. Um, quite happy with the results so far. And uh, we'll just keep it going. All right. Well, here's you got okay. the one-year chart. Now I'm going to go ahead and talk about this a little bit myself. Because like she sure. said, like she said, there's, a, there's it, it has some pretty good little pops on it. It has some nice little pops on it. And what I mean by pops, little bounces and pullbacks. And... There's a little resistance level we need to break out of, and that's going to be right around this 343 area. As that you indicated, 344 indicated on this red line right here. But also, we have other resistances that we can look forward to, and that's right around the 426 up to this 469 area. And then we had a uh, another resistance level, which is right around this 5556 area, 564. Then we actually had a pretty good little high last year on it up here at 1265. So something happened on that day to really elevate this stock to that to that big high. And that was back on the day of uh, 5, 14, 18. I might look back in the news on that and see what happened there. But uh, up and down roller coaster ride. It hit a year low right around last year. I'd say at 6.5. 0.0065 but it didn't hold very long and then I'm going to pull up a 20 day just to show you what a 20 day looks like and we had that low down there at 145 which my support level is at 15.8 and for the last two weeks we got gradual climb up no hesitation I mean just kind of nice little trend line going up there to that 329 area which we need to break this 344 and now I'm seeing another resistance right here right around three six so if this thing pulls back any if any at all i see a solid support right around the two seven area the two eight somewhere in there and that about a probably a pivot point and it's not a very high volume trade right yet but it's consistent and i'm going to keep this thing on watch i know vegas is in it right now and she's doing very well in it this is S O A N. And okay. then she's going to talk about this next one. Well, the next one really is just going to be a little bonus because I said we'd throw in a little bonus today since it's been a little while. And I want to talk about Nokia. 
then OK is the bonus play of the week. And as you guys know, Nokia is into the uh, telecommunications industry. And uh, I will say that uh, the volume, I don't know if you guys noticed the volume on Friday, over 58 million shares traded. Um, the highest I've seen actually since, oh gosh, I think it's going to be almost over a year since I've seen that volume. Oh yeah. Last time I saw a volume like that was back in July 2018 when it traded 62.1 million. So this has been a little overdue here on Nokia. And why is Nokia on the move? Well, let's see here. I saw an article not too long ago and uh, that was mentioned on uh, one of the websites. And they did talk about Nokia, that they are uh, coming out with a new product launch. And um, apparently they also have a partnership with Verizon Communications and also with Cricket Wireless. I've never heard of Cricket, but I've heard of Verizon. And they're going to offer two exclusive Nokia smartphones, which will run the Android system. And it's only going to be given to prepaid customers. So if you're on a monthly plan, you're out of luck. Um, and hopefully they hope that this will be the first in what could become a series of strategic efforts to, um, I guess, uh, collaborate here. So that's quite interesting. Uh, could that make the company pop? Well, you know what? Maybe that was why it popped. I don't know. But you know what? This chart is also extremely bullish. And I'm going to let Jim talk about that because that was really delicious volume. All right. And this is NOK. Mm -hmm. I'm going to pull up yours chart on it. Look at that breakout we've had here in the past past, uh, past day here. All the way from that resistance level right here at around 624. You see where it broke out? It's that previous high here. It had that little gap up. And then all of a sudden we had that big uh, pennant flag breakout to a high of 664. And I had a resistance at 665. I could be off a penny or two every once in a while. But she definitely hit that. And let's look at the year's chart real fast. Let's look at the three-year. Get some kind of picture of what we're looking at. We had a three-year high, two-year high, actually, at 665. And then we had some drama and it pulled on back, created a another support level and bounced on back up and hit this resistance level here at 638 pulled on back and then we've had a little choppy ride all the way up to this 660 area which it closed at and we had a 664 high and we need to break that 665 which it could have been 664 i mean sometimes i'm off the trend lines off just a little bit from that two-year high i'm going to go ahead and pull up the 20 day and let you take a good scout at that we had that little red line resistance at 617 broke past that to that previous high of 624 and then here we are today it just broke on past that level and we're at that 664 high and this had some uh, news with Verizon I think which excited me out a little bit let me see if I can yeah it had some kind of deal that Nokia has gained 7% of the company once famous some smartphone with Verizon so you could be able to to look up that news and see what that's about but that's in okay i'm bullish on it i want to play a pullback on it so let me see what i got here for a five day one day 15 minute let me look at the five day five minute draw a couple trend lines in here you got a support level right here at 658 and if that don't hold i don't think it can go any i don't want it to go any lower than this 651 if it does, we'll get that 645 and then a solid support down here at 638. And I'm going to look at the moving averages just on the one day. We're tightening. We've got a little squeeze going on here. They've all kind of combined together for the last couple hours of the trading day, but kept that resistance level. That resistance level was right here at 664. You see what I'm talking about? We had a previous high, pulled back to that 100, then kind of rode up above the 50. Pulled back to the 200, kept a solid support level right around 660, and it pulled back to that 658. So we kept a pretty good little tight range right in here for the last three quarters of the day on Friday. That tells me that we're going to probably have another breakout on this stock, and that's NOK. -okay. 
nobody wanted to sell it so i think that's about it and then yeah i also want to mention that yeah. i'm you know jim's going to be uh, i think he's got his options account ready to go and uh, he'll be talking a little more about his option trades and uh, that'll be exciting and you know i'm going to look at some options on uh, nokia tomorrow you know i'm going to look at maybe the 650 calls and the seven dollar calls and uh, see what they're going for and uh, if I do take a position on an option trade, I'll share it on the video tomorrow. Yep. So stay tuned on that. And I just want to thank all the viewers and a special shout out to these ladies that have been coming by my chat room with Jim. And uh, really great to see the great ladies that have been coming by and sharing ideas. And I am so impressed by um, how many of these ladies know so much about stocks. And even if they don't know a lot, they're learning. And I love it. And I love even the newbies are coming by and learning. And I got so many nice messages from people. You know, I'm going to have to do a video just on the thanks that we're getting of these messages because they're just so worthy to share. Um, people thanking us for even helping them, even though they're not a member of our room. They're just so grateful that uh, they connected with us and grateful um, that we're even helping them. And I had one person say, I don't, I'm not even a subscriber to your chat room, and yet you still help me. And I said, well, you know, it's not always about being a subscriber. You know, we love helping everybody. So we're happy to do that. And I want to just thank everyone for following and subscribing and for coming by our chat room. We appreciate it. And if you join, even better. If you don't, that's okay. We understand it's, it's not for everybody. Um, on the last but not least, I just want to end off with a nice motivational quote, if Jim can showcase that quote. This is from one of my favorite, favorite people, William O'Neill. And, you know, he's written many books and he's all about the can slim theory. And that'll be mentioned maybe another day. But I love this quote and I suggest, uh, you know, people write this down on a sticky note and put this on your wall and always look at it every day because that is so true what he said that his philosophy is that all stocks are bad there's no good nothing good unless they go up which is so true because when a stock's going up we're all happy right and if they go down instead you just have to cut your losses fast and he said letting losses run is really the most serious mistake made by most investors or traders and i can't stress this enough neither can jim so that's why you got to have your stops ready. If you don't put a stop loss, mental stop, exit that trade. I don't know why people are afraid to get out of the trade. Just get out. And you can always, like Jim says, you can always get back in. Right, Jim? Yep. And then what's new about this and what I'm going to kind of be the devil's advocate of this quote is, I just opened up me an options account. And I'm going to understand what calls and puts are. And I've been trading for 15 years and charting for 15 years. So um, I just wanted to bring that to the forefront. And I opened up a Tastyworks account with $500 for option trades. And I'm going to be probably adding a little bit more money to it as I go on. But this is going to be my goal for 2019. And I'm going to be following a lot of good option traders. And I also want to bring something else up that Vegas said about the room is we like to teach or we like to, to teach, you know, new traders how to trade. But here in the last month, something has really hit me pretty hard, pretty strong. And that's learning from other traders that come into the room. And we've got some real good option traders that are, are starting to pull their weight in the room. Plus, we've had some experienced option traders come to the room and teaching us how to inspire ourselves. And I had one of our local members this weekend spend a good hour with me, uh, teaching me how to start trading options for beginner. And maybe he's, he's familiar with this platform of Tastyworks. And I just want to give kudos out to, you know who I'm talking about. I ain't going to mention no names. But I, he told me a few stories that people have helped him in the room too. And he's following some other people that are good option traders in the room. So I'm really excited now. It, it took me a little while to finally cut the cake, cut the ice, or break the ice and get into this. But I, I don't. We don't try to push anybody to do anything. You need to do it on your own free will. And I'm ready to learn how to put trade options in 2019. 
And I just wanted to mention that, and I want to say thank you to the room for that. If it wasn't for the members in our room encouraging me, I don't think I would be doing it yet. So kudos out to the room. <clears throat> All right. Well, thank you, everyone, for tuning in to the Sunday edition of the ILS Stocks uh, YouTube report and hopefully this will help you uh, be ready for tomorrow and for the week because we also gave some really good swing trade ideas so not everyone we know trades during the day and can because they work so you might want to consider some of the ones we talked about for a swing trade for yourselves and uh, we'd love to hear your story I mean if the stocks worked out and you've made money on it we'd love to hear about it so we love feedback and we love helping people and bottom line is we love stocks and that's it for me and hope everyone has a great day and see you tomorrow. Jim, over to you to closing remarks. All right. This is the aftermarket report with Vegas and Jim. Today's date is 11-27-2019 and please subscribe and hit that ring that bell so you can get our future updates and we love stocks. <laughs>